YouTube comments, Facebook groups, hell yeah brother rallies. Seems like everywhere you look, there are people trying to tell you that you need more power. There's always a discussion of how much power Harley Davidsons make. Then I see these guys <laughs> building ridiculous bikes that don't really need 180 horsepower, big giant turbos, nitrous, all in the name of more power. There's a guy who spends $120 on five gallons of fuel for his Harley. Trust me, I get it. But power alone only tells half the story. What you need to be looking at is the power to weight ratio. That's what we're gonna do in today's video. We are on a quest to find out which stock Harley Davidson makes the most power to weight ratio. Now in this video, the numbers that we're going to use for horsepower are to the crank, not to the rear wheel. And that's because those are the numbers that Harley Davidson uses to advertise. So I'll start by showing you guys the bikes that we're gonna use in this comparison. This is the 2024 Rogue Glide. I know a lot of you have seen this bike already. Complete redesign on the body, new 12.3 inch screen. Also comes with a 117 inch engine. Next up, we're going to use the 2024 Lowrider S, which also comes with a 117. We've got a 2020, I think this is a 22, maybe it's a 23. Either way, nothing has changed on the Pan America. Uh, we've sold every new Pan America we have. So this is one that I found we're gonna use for the video. Also, I should mention the weight that we're gonna claim is obviously not with those saddlebags on it. Next up, we have a 2024 Street Bob that comes with 114 cubic inch Milwaukee 8. And last but definitely not least, the 2024 Nightster Special with the Revolution Max 975. Now clearly in the planning for this video, I've already done the numbers. I know which one wins. Clearly it's a surprise because otherwise there'd be no point doing this video. But before I reveal all the numbers, I want you guys to guess down in the comments, which of these bikes behind me makes the best power to weight ratio. So we'll start with the Rogue Glide and it comes in at 838 pounds, which is down a few pounds from last year's model. And the horsepower is actually up because they went to the 117. So at 838 pounds running order weight, you have 105 horsepower. Now on your Lowrider S, you're coming in at 679 pounds with 103 horsepower. The Pan America, 569 pounds, with 150 horsepower. Your Street Bob will be 655 pounds at 94 horsepower. And your Nightster S will be 481 pounds with 91 horsepower. So if you are as bad as I am at math, or if you're also like me and just too lazy when you're watching a YouTube video to try to do math in your head, I'll throw the chart up on the screen now so we can talk about how this thing played out. So you'll see at number one on the list is the Pan America with some pretty impressive numbers. I ran some other random numbers on different cars, different bikes just to see. And 0 0.263 was actually pretty strong. So in first place, 150 horsepower, 569 pound running order weight, we have the Pan America that came in at 0 0.263. Number two, 91 horse, 481 pounds, is the Nightster Special at 0 0.189. Number three is the Lowrider S at 0 0.151. Number four is the Street Bob at 0 0.143. And very surprisingly to me was the all new Rogue Glide at 0 0.125 which absolutely blows my mind because I did have a chance to ride that bike and it feels pretty fast. It feels like it makes good power. So what's the takeaway from this video? Horsepower is not the end all be all and does not tell you the full story. Now, do I think this is gonna stop people from arguing on the internet? Absolutely not. As some of you may remember one of my past videos, your Harley Davidson does not need more power, which was very controversial. I feel like this video is gonna be controversial as well. 
but I'm very curious to hear your thoughts. And that's because I know a lot of us are riding bikes that just lost to the Nightster Special. And that may make you feel some type of way. I think it makes me feel some type of way. So I think there's two things to take away from this video. One being that horsepower is not the end of the conversation. And two, the Nightster S is a problem for a lot of guys riding a lot bigger, more manly bikes. So with that, I wanna thank a special customer here at Tim's Harley Davidson, Mr. Steve Whitfield. He came up with the idea of this video. He and I were talking. He ended up trading his Lowrider S for the Nightster S. I asked him what prompted him to do so. That started a conversation that led to this video. So Steve, thank you for that idea, buddy. Subscribe if you're not already. Like the video if you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.